Welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and this is Andy255, and this is Module 8, and we are now working on the bowling alley as far as the modeling goes and adding materials. So, in this video, we're just talking about talk to you about scale. Um, same exact thing where we're going to want to make sure that we're in centimeters and each grid unit equals one foot. So, I found a couple of templates for you guys to look at. Um, the one I want you guys to actually uh, use is the um, template uh, that I'm going to show here, and that is this guy right here. Okay, so go ahead and get that um, in. Uh, go into the top view and just go to view, um, image, plane, import image, and import this one here and this will give you a good um, template to actually use okay so from the start where the gutter start is at zero and all the way to the end is 60 feet so it's a lot longer than you think if we consider all this 15 feet that we have where you're holding the ball and you you're at the front line or the back of the line I don't know if any of you have bowled before but you usually take a couple steps and and roll the ball and that goes down the alleyway and strikes the pins so um, if you haven't played uh, if you haven't bowled uh, go out and do it it's a lot of fun but anyway so that's what we're gonna use today so that should be uh, make sure you download um, uh, the download the reference files that I have up for you. It's in a zip folder, so make sure you get those. And it's going to have dominoes in there too, but we're not going to work on that right now. But you guys can keep those. We're going to use that in the mouse trap. Um, I'm going to have you guys do a Rube Goldberg, draw something up, and and do a quick uh, Rube, Rube Goldberg. And there's some um, new things I'm going to talk to you about. New things you're going to learn. So it'll be fun constraints um, so alright so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get started you're gonna move that down so if you select it you just go ahead and hit the W key and move it down if you can't find it you can usually find it in here okay in your outliner just move it down from the grid so you can model alright the first thing I'm gonna do is like I got everything done so the first thing I did was I I modeled the alley by itself. You can see that there's a break right here. I, I modeled it into to that point. And then I built this part from an extrude here. Okay, you can see how I built that. And you can build if you don't want to build it out of one object. I tend, I usually, I'm just so used to doing that that sometimes I forget that sometimes rigid bodies has an issue with this so if I do I'll have to rebuild it, rebuild it out of cubes basically primitives okay but normally I usually don't have too many problems as long as I delete the history the history is what causes most of the issues you have with dynamics is that it does not like history and it likes to have everything center pivoted and it also needs it also likes to have everything frozen that means everything is just basically cleared out so if you, whether you build this out of single you know cubes put together that's fine um, and then you just need to make sure you delete the history and freeze transformations okay and center pivot so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now just center pivot delete by type history and freeze transformations so we don't have any issues and that's basically going from the top view you can see that I follow the lines very carefully okay all the way from the beginning all the way to the end okay where the pins actually get, uh, strike the um, where the ball actually strikes the pins okay I also build a back wall a separate piece okay all right so you know and there might be a point where I might want to separate this part here 
from the building. So let's say I'm doing a simulation and I want the friction and the bounciness and all the attributes to be a little different for for the ball sliding or rolling down the alley and then I would want the um, attributes would be changed differently on this. Maybe I want this to be more bouncy, maybe I don't want it bouncy at all. So sometimes it's good to have them separate. Okay. So it's easy to do. You know, you can select the faces and separate this whole box. You know, I'm going to keep the back the way it is because I definitely want that to be uh, uh, different attributes for that. I want to kind of play around with that because the pins are going to actually hit the back. I don't want them bouncing all the way back out here. Okay, so that has to be, I'm going to keep that, um, you know, really low on resilience and bounciness and uh, um, bring up the uh, uh, friction of that and then this part I don't want I want it to be pretty slippery um, because I want the ball to roll, roll freely down the lane okay so we're just talking about modeling right now but that's part of modeling is to figure out you know you might want to go ahead and separate that I don't know what it's going to act like until we get to the simulation so that's the first thing I do and the second thing is I create the gutters and those are um, primarily to catch the ball if you roll it outside of the uh, that alley here okay so so I used basically a cylinder and then I cut it in half and took the top top and bottom off and extruded it now I had to reverse the normals first, okay? So when you create a cylinder, the normals are facing outwards. And as you know, that if you don't flip the or reverse the normals, the object will pass through. Even if you select it and give it a passive rigid body, you'll drop that object and it'll slide right through like it doesn't even exist because it doesn't see that as normal, okay? So you'll have to reverse the normals bef right after you cut it in half and then you want to select the faces and extrude them and that's what I how I got this and how do I want to apply it well you can see that I've added a little curve or an angle on this and I noticed that I did not go above okay the platform so it's just below the platform and that's that's what I want if you go above then the ball might get hung up on that one little corner there okay also you need to make sure that everything is the history is deleted and, and freeze transformations for these to work nicely so I'm going to do once you model those and those run all the way to the end as you can see from the beginning part all the way to the end okay all right great Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is basically we got most of the, the alleyway done, the bowling alley done. Now we just need to work on the bowling pin. Okay, so what I did with the bowling pin was I basically selected a cube that a star, or excuse me, a cylinder disc. And there's two ways to uh, model this, of course. As you know, there's you can use EP curves, which I thought that would be easy enough to do, and probably be. I think they're about the same speed. I think um, hard surface modeling this, poly modeling this. Um, I'm actually faster than I would be. I'm gonna move that up to the top here so you guys can see it. Um, plus, I was able to really control. The edge loops that I have because you know this is going to be um, you don't want to smooth that okay um, because of simulation speed you know how your graphics card can handle that now scale okay now we talked about scale so that's why we have this in here so how did I scale this up in the first place so 
Um, I should have talk ad- talked about that. I didn't really because I know that I know the width of a the alley is five feet. That's, I've seen that in another uh, floor plan. So it's five feet, not from gutter to gutter, but from the inside of the platform to the other side of the platform. It's five um, five feet. So before I even started this. Um, I went in here, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this before, but I set that up as five feet. So one, two, three, four, five. I, di- I guess it is gutter to gutter, so five feet. So that works out pretty good. So I set that up. I had to scale this up a lot to get it to get this up to five units across here. You can see right here. So that's what you're looking for five units across there and the rest will follow perfectly okay all right if we're off a little bit it's okay it's not a big deal um, so let's bring this back in and there's our bowling pin again you can use two different methods um, one is I start out with a disk at the bottom and just kind of uh, place the um, let me show the other one that I have in here there we go so I place this in there it's a little big right now but I placed this in and this was very helpful to get the shape right which is cool so you can see that I went pretty closely to this 15 inches tall there we go a little off still I think we're pretty close, yeah. So that's what I used. Pretty close. Yep. And then the bowling ball we also have in here um, when you create a bowling ball. Let's see if I can go open that up. Bowling balls, go ahead and put that down. I believe that was like 8 and some odd change inches. So let's look at that. Let me bring that in there, in here really quick. Uh, no, 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 there it is. So 8.595, okay. So open that up and you know, you scale that down and then you get your, you get your diameter right. Now, I have to look at this then, each grid unit is 12 inches, right? So if I take that and bring that up right at the bottom, you can see that another half of this is six inches, right? So between here and the bottom is is 15 or close to it. So I just kind of make your best guesstimate and get as close as you can. And again, with this ball, okay, So let's say halfway is right here. You can tell that if halfway is six, then I cut that in half. That would be nine, and so I'm right in there with that the scale. So again, the the best guess, right? Okay. So now I've got the ball. Now I just you don't go anything crazy with the ball. It's just a, basically a sphere, and that's it. Just defaulted. Okay. So it's simple, really. Now you got to think about a delivery system. Okay, now we talked about a delivery system, but this is a long ways, a lot of space between the start and the finish and uh, to push it with impulse, okay? For impulse to work, we have to push it pretty hard and it makes it very unstable, okay? so. We're going to find a delivery system that works the best. Okay, so I'll take you through what I did with the delivery system. Okay, so we're going to create a torus. Very simple. I'm going to move it up and let's get close to it. All right, so hit the F key. And in here, I'm just going to show you, basically tell you the exact measurements. Now you can go in here and and mess with it and fuss with it and whatever um, but just want you just pump, uh, 
punch these numbers in. Radius is 7, hit enter. And section radius is perfect as 0.5, it'll hold the ball perfectly. Okay, that's the width of this. And subdivision division axes, uh, 20 is not enough because the ball won't roll smoothly on this. So we need to go a little higher. Normally I wouldn't want to, but um, since this is a delivery device, it needs to be pretty smooth. Okay. And that is it. Um, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and with that done, I'm going to go to the top view and I can go ahead and isolate this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Control 1. There we go. And isolate that. So I'm going to cut off the top or the top part right here and delete that. And I'm going to do this part right here. So now we've got this like little slope or slide or whatever you want to call it. And so with that selected, now I want to go in here and go ahead and just kind of click on one, double click on the other. And we're going to go all the way down. Okay. All right, a couple more. I think that's it. That's good. And so, nope, I need one more. There we go. That's better. Okay, so with that selected, then I'm going to hit the delete key. Okay. So there's, there's basically our slide. Now notice that it's facing the wrong way because I want the ball to kind of roll down and gain some momentum. So let's look at it this way. I know it's kind of confusing still, maybe. Let's go ahead and, and uh, center pivot that and rotate that properly. There we go. So basically we use it as a slide. And we can, we're not going to see it anyway, right? Uh, we're going to pull this back. Let me give you an example. You see where somebody would pick up the ball, kind of step on, you know, kind of get these centered your feet centered and then you do a couple steps and throw the ball right so we'll have this up where the person would be anyway and your camera is going to be in front of that as the ball rolls down and crashes into the pins okay so you'll never see this you can turn it invisible if it bothers you let me go control one again there we go and let's get this right in the center like that okay and we're going to want this pretty close. Well, actually, we don't need to have it pretty close. This will be fine. All right, something like that. And then from the side view, this is really super important. We need to make sure that it's not intersecting and it's not going through the top. So it's going to, you can't have these touching, or I wouldn't do that anyway. I'm going to just kind of back um, move this incrementally hold the alt key and the arrow key down I've, I've got the alt key held down and then I'm hitting the arrow key down you can see that's moving it in small increments okay it's much much uh, it's much nicer and much easier to do that than to move this around because it gets tough to get it close and that's why I use the alt and the, the arrow keys. Alright, so issue number one would be that the normals are reversed in the inside. So we'll select the object and just reverse normals. Go to hold this hold down the spacebar and go to mesh display and reverse. And there it is. So now it should see that perfectly. Okay. Alright, so basically um, everything's modeled now okay so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add materials and I would suggest just adding blend or excuse me adding Maya Lambert materials so let's take a look at a finished scene okay great and you can see I took it I've taken it this far over here all the way up to where it starts you can see that I've got a color that is kind of like wood and then steel is more kind of a uh, gray blue gray and then the box to hold the pins in is yellow 
and then the pin itself turned out pretty good put those little stripes on there and the ball uh, is just black just pitch black and the nice thing about the ball is that I will definitely see it going down because there's a huge contrast between those two see if it was all gray then I couldn't really see what the heck is going on with that bowling ball okay so that's good all right so let's go back all right so you can see that what I what parts that I changed and at this point, since we got it, we have it all finished. Let's go ahead and get rid of the background. I don't know if I have that done that already. Yeah, there it is. So we don't need that anymore. We also don't need the grid, so we can turn that off. There we go. All right. So in the next video, we'll get set up for the rigid body dynamic simulation, and I will see you then.